Welcome back everyone, I'm the Architecture Insider and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to create this diagram and how to get ideas to create such a diagram and how to create this diagram in Illustrator. The first things I did is I looked at the nodes of the area and how we can create better nodes and where other nodes possibly are. So the first thing I saw was that there's this row that's connected by four different lines. Maybe red, maybe green isn't the best color to use. So I saw that there's this road that connects through the main bazaar, which is where our site is. Which runs through the whole site, this road that connects through through many large. This one goes to a village, this goes to this settlement, and this goes to another village, and this goes to another village. So which means that this is a important, important node. This, and how we can implement this into our design. Now where can there be another node? So when I looked at the main idea I thought about what if we create another node in the main bazaar because since that's our site and how we can create something here that would interest people to move from A to B and how that will work. So we, we thought of creating some entertainment so for example a, a recycling center, a cinema or a open outdoor theater or just like ex like entrepreneurships and extracurriculum activities that people could do. So so this would then let people to go from A to B in interest and do shopping from all of these other buildings which would be which would increase the economy of this of the area. These two different nodes we knew that we'd have to create some more infrastructure around around these area as you can see we've already done and uh, what kind of infrastructure would be there so we then started thinking about okay we have existing retail buildings but we need more retail because that's what the project is, is about so we started looking at in the, into this private land it was a quite of a problem to convince our teacher but we thought about if he's not using the land let's make some use out of it and he can get rent for all of these shops that we're creating which they were really happy about we then thought about creating some more retail but with housing because when you create retail it would create dead dead zones and dead times during the during the day if the shops are not being used. So we created retail and homes where where the lower part could be shops, and the top part could be homes. This would create active surveillance on the area and just keep the space busy as as much as long as possible. All right. So we then thought about how can we educate people into this entertainment area. We don't just want it to be entertainment, we want it to be educational. So we thought about farming. The farming is a very useful and existing feature that Bangladesh people use and all of this land is already farmland. So we thought about educating the youngsters about farmland and how important it is to do farming and how it influences people. So we thought that that would be a good idea. And then we thought about entertainment and what that could be. So we thought that Okay, since that's going to be the case, let's create this. It was an existing building and a new building, but there could be one large building, which would be very useful. Then with a little bit, with a bit of park, you know, just to make the entertainment space a little bit better. Then that brings us to the next part about parks. What green spaces are there, and how can we increase the green infrastructure? So the first things we looked at was these actual roads, and looking at the existing roads, some of the roads, some of these, some of these roads we've created, some of these are just extended from existing. Now, we tried to make this space a lot more permeable because I didn't feel like the area was very permeable and it was just more difficult for people to go around the area. So what we've created was these new roads which are going to be existing improved roads slash new r roads. All of these roads, they will have a green infrastructure which means that they're going to be followed by a series of trees and the whole and all of these roads to increase the urban quality of the existing realm. What we then decided to do is that how can we implement the water feature on, on site? Because this is this is the existing water feature and we wanted to bring this back into the culture because back in the day it was it had a high historical significance to the site. So we thought about how can we make this into the bazaar area. Are we going to have to move the bazaar there which is what we've tried to do by having these little little retail units but that didn't work because it's difficult to move a whole existing area to a new place. So we thought about what if we create something where we could go back to 
What if we create this waterline and bring it back into the bazaar? How will that work? Are we going to have like a wo large water basin in the main node, which make to make the main node better? And here, are we going to have a water diagonal or something? You know, so these are all the different ideas that, we, that we've had. So you can see that there's a lot of pink in the areas. These are the retail units, which are here, here, and goes along the side. A little bit around here they go to spill out into these main areas to make the to make the 500 walkable meter rule flexible because I think the 500 meter rule goes something like this as far I think as far as I know so this would so obviously the people here they can't walk this is too far so we've created these shopping units like a mini shopping center complementary shopping center units where people could you could use them from different villages instead of having to walk all the way to here Talking about transport, we've had to increase the transport infrastructure by creating small stations, uh, looking at possible a possible one here, like a, you know, just making the space a lot more modern by increasing quality of the public realm, more shops, more variety of shops so that you have equality, uh, e economical equality, increase the green spaces because there's none, give people a high, a good quality lifestyle, which is, I think, very important in urban design. So this just brings up brings us to the basic idea of what we're doing all of this was obviously done by hand and now i'm going to t show you guys how i did this in illustrator so without any further ado let's jump onto illustrator once we went to illustrator what i did is i copied in the image and i used adobe color on google to just select a good color a color palette in the design now to make these into swatches all you need to do is pick the color Click, click new swatch, it would have the color that you already picked and you do this five times and then you have your color palette done. So after this, I literally just copied exactly what I did before. You go, you look at the, what kind of line weight you've done, you look at the shapes, the colors and you literally copy it because you've already done it in sketch. You just want to highlight it again and make it digital just so that it's a bit more cleaner. I'm only using the pen tool because it's literally the only tool that you need. It's simple, it's easy easy to use nothing complicated and you can change the line weight you can change it again which is just something that i found very helpful now what i did is i changed the stroke to the arrows now this does take a bit of time and it's your preference there's no right or wrong arrow to use just not something that's very big or very small and you can then change the arrow width and the size using the scale bar at the bottom Previously I talked about these little water features that we're doing to bring the water to the bazaar which is what I'm adding these arrows for. I didn't do them in the sketch because it was a later idea so you know cheating a little bit but that's totally okay. Now I'm going to do these orange lines which are the new proposed and existing roads because I know it's going to be very difficult to get those gaps in between the lines because you know how they're like dashed so I'm going to make a copy later on. So you go to select, same, and you click appearance. So this will select everything that looks the same, same color, same stroke, whatever it may be. So you can see what I did is I just separated the layers afterwards just so that it makes everything easier and easier to select and unselect and change layers, moving them up and down in front of each other. It just makes life easier. So I messed with the lines quite a bit to make sure that I get something that looks right because I initially thought that it just looked a bit weird. But you know, it's fine, it's trial and error. If you don't like it, go back, change it again until you're happy with it. Now to make a line weight into its own shape, you go to object, path, outline stroke. This will create a stroke. Now this is why you would have your copy, just in case it goes wrong, you can't turn this back into a path, you'd have to delete it, do it again. So this copy helps you doing that. I then went, change the stroke. It's a case of trial and error to see what kind of strokes you like, how thick and how much you want it to be visible. So I then went on to the nodes. As you remember, we had two nodes. So I just made it into the yellow from the color palette. You know, they're just in your swatches. I made it a bit of a dark yellow with the black stroke and just moved it to the back with the lower opacity you know I then I then did this the same for the second one and then I went on to creating those retail units if you remember 
Now all of these recoil units, I'm just going to create them, you know, move them to the different layer so that they're all the same color. Now again to select these, I went to the same object, selected all of them and then move them down to the, uh, to the layer that I created for it. You can just see how easy it is to use Illustrator. The pen tool is amazing. It's easy to select all of your layers. It's simple. If anything goes wrong, you can select the layers individually and I really really feel that Illustrator can be used a lot more in architecture rather than Photoshop. At least for me in undergrad, that, that, that's all I use, just Photoshop. But Illustrator is amazing. I then went on to create all of my green spaces, which again had its own different layer. So in the design we had a, a little bit more water features, which again I am adding afterwards, which is totally fine. In the sketch I had a mixture of different lines about connections so I just separated them into a different layer because I just thought that how I showed in the sketch wasn't clear enough and that doing it this way just makes a bit more clear about the connections that I'm creating between the bazaar, the existing bazaar, the villages and the new and the new bazaar. I wasn't happy with the lines that I did so I went back, did it again and because I had a copy of it it was really easy to just to just do the offset path again and it just made everything so much easier. So once again, I never like to show the drawings without showing you how to present them. Here you can just see how I presented it on InDesign. Just on a, this is an A3 sheet, a bit of text on the left explaining what's happening. The key is imported as well. And then on the right is just the large image. And that is it. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next week.